Hello and welcome to this video presentation on the measurement of substructures from Duncan Cartledge Online. This presentation will reflect some of the changes in NRM2 Edition 2. After working through this video tutorial, you should be able to understand the requirements of NRM2 when measuring groundworks. And, in addition, you will feel confident to measure substructures for a simple structure. We will also revisit the calculation of center lines or mean girths. Substructures come in many shapes and sizes, from simple housing schemes to complex multi rise buildings. It is important that when we measure substructure, that we have a common definition. Now, one place to find such a definition is the BCIS standard form of cost analysis. This page contains the definition of substructures taken from the standard form of cost analysis. For a more complete definition, refer to the BCIS elemental standard form of cost analysis. Groundwork is synonymous with risk. I remember when I was a student, the ground being described as infinitely variable. This is because no two sites are the same and many factors can impact on operations, such as unstable ground, height of the water table, rock and other hard materials. NRM2 now contains a definition of rock as this has long been a bone of contention between contractors and clients QSs. The definition is Rock is any boulder greater than 5 cubic metres. Additionally, any boulder that can be removed by an excavator bucket is not rock. For logistical reasons, underground drainage is carried out simultaneously to the substructure works. Earthworks is one of the work sections that gives the taker off a choice of how to categorise work, and this will be discussed later. This example is taken from Appendix G of NRM2 and details typical contents of a groundworks package. Note the inclusion of below ground drainage. As illustrated here, the taking off list for substructures is extensive, covering several NRM2 work sections, from lifting turf right through to the masonry in the external walls. NRM2 2nd edition now requires earthwork support to be measured to the sides of all excavation over 250 mm deep. When building on virgin sites, a considerable amount of preliminary site work may be required. There is only one way to assess the extent of the work to visit the site and to make notes and or take videos. Urban sites in particular can be dumping grounds for all sorts of items, large and small. I once remember a site where we discovered a large safe. It was empty, I should add, but it was very heavy and needed considerable effort and cost to remove. All such items must be logged and included in the bill of quantities or work package. In this video, we will be looking at strip foundations, of which there are basically two types, as shown here. On the left, the more traditional strip foundation, and on the right, the deep strip or trench fill. Trench fill is more widely used. The name is derived from the fact that the trench is filled with concrete, thereby eliminating the need for masonry work in the trench. Whichever approach is adopted, Note that the external skin of the facework is carried two courses below ground level. This is purely from an appearance point of view, and we will return to this during the measurement example that follows. So here are the details of a simple foundation using a traditional strip foundation. Note the weak mix concrete cavity filling. This is to prevent any water that ends up in the cavity does not run to the base of the foundations and cause problems. 
the top surface of the cavity filling slopes to the external skin. The idea being that any water will run off and escape through the so-called weep holes. These are where the vertical joints of the brickwork, or perpens, are left open, that is, without mortar. Following clearing the site, the first task is to reduce levels as shown in blue on this page. Reducing levels is taken for the entire footprint of the building to the external face of the foundations. All excavation, of course, produces varying amounts of excavator material. Now, some can be used in making up levels under landscaped areas, but much of it has to be removed from the site as it is unsuitable. Any contaminated excavated material has to be kept separate and disposed of carefully in an appropriate tip. This is a good time to refer to NRM2. Now, if you're using the first edition of NRM2, have a look at page 134. If you're using the second edition, have a look at page 159. Earthworks is one of a number of NRM2 work sections that gives the taker off alternative ways to describe items. As can be seen in level one, the classification for this item is bulk excavation, which includes, according to the notes and comments, reduced levels, basements, pools, etc. The taker off may choose to classify this item as bulk excavation or, if preferred, reduced level excavation. In fact, most QSs use both terms as shown in items on pages 14 and 15. So, here we go with the worked example. In this case, we're using traditional setting out. In other presentations, spreadsheet applications are used. It may be a good idea to print off the drawing on page 11. To the external dimensions of the walls, we add twice times 250 millimeters to give the overall footprint of the excavation, 15.5 by 7.5. The reduced level excavation is 150 millimeters deep. Note, as previously mentioned, the excavated material has been removed from site. The next item on the taking off list is the foundation excavation. And for this, we will need to calculate the mean girth or center line of the trench. Once calculated, we will be able to use it for a number of items. To calculate the mean girth from the external dimensions, add the length and width together and multiply by two, and then deduct four times, twice times, half times the thickness of the wall. In this case, 275 millimeters to give us 42.9. NRM2 states that masonry should be measured on the center line or mean girth. Now, looking at this drawing, if we use the girth on the external face, we are over measuring. And if we use the girth on the internal face, we are under measuring. It's necessary, therefore, to calculate the center line as shown on this page in dotted yellow. The mean girth can be calculated from the external or internal dimensions and is based on the number of external angles. When working from the external face, deduct twice times, half times the thickness of the wall for each external angle. When working from the inside face, add twice times half times the thickness for each external angle. When the foundations are complete, the trench will have to be backfilled with excavated material, as shown on this slide. The best way to calculate the net amount of backfill required is to allow for the trench to be completely filled with the material, see page 15, and then later, when the concrete and the masonry is measured to deduct the volumes displaced to leave the net volume. In situ concrete work is another work section 
where the taker of has alternative approaches to describing items. The foundation may be described as horizontal work or foundations, as notes and comments. Again, most people have elected to use both terms as shown on page 20 of the dimensions. Note that the concrete work is poured directly onto earth or unblinded hardcore, and this has to be described. The reason being that concrete is deemed to be poured into formwork, and pouring on earth will require more than the net volume of concrete, as this method of placing is so imprecise. The estimator should allow a percentage addition to the bill of quantities to allow for this. As referred to previously, now the concrete has been measured, adjustments can be made for the backfilling and removal of spoil. And now to the masonry. I would also recommend reference to the masonry video tutorial. Again, for this item we can use the mean girth. Because the wall comprises two skins or leaves of brick, either side of the center line, we can use the mean girth and multiply it by two, the height being calculated from the dimensions on the drawing. This page contains yet another two items that can utilize the mean girth. Forming a cavity and building in wall ties is a measurable item, as is the concrete cavity filling discussed earlier. Even though the concrete filling is only 50 millimeters thick, it has to be measured in cubic meters. This is page 201 of NRM2 second edition and contains the rules for the measurement of cavities and damp of courses, which will be dealt with on the next page. Once again, the mean girth can be used for this item. By now, you've probably come to the conclusion that it's essential that the calculation of the mean girth is accurate, as any error will have a knock-on effect for several items. A damper, of course, or DPC, is required for both skins or leaves of the external wall. Bitumen damper, of course, is supplied in rolls approximately 30 meters long. At the junctions of the rolls, a damper, of course, is lapped 150 millimeters. But when taking off quantities, this is not considered, and the DPC is measured net. The estimator should add an allowance to cover for this. We must now make some adjustments to the backfill and removal of spoil. The first item is an adjustment for the masonry in the trench to the filling measured on page 15. In addition, a strip of reduced level excavation measured on page 14 must be reinstated. To do this, the center line of the strip has to be calculated as shown here. Starting with the girth of the external face, 44 meters, add four times, twice times, half times, 250 millimeters to arrive at the mean girth. The next items are those associated with the ground floor slab. All of the items on this page have the same footprint, 14.45 by 6.45. The difference is that NOM2 requires some of the items to be measured in square meters and some in cubic meters. A quick tip to cope with this is as shown here, to have one set of dimensions and then add on and adjust the cubic meters as shown. There are alternative approaches, and if using a spreadsheet, it is not possible to use anding on. Damp proof membranes are measured in section five, excavation and filling. Finally, you will recall that we measured two skins of common brickwork on page 21. We must now adjust this to account for the two courses of facework needed on the external face, as explained earlier. Before we leave this section, let's have a look at support to the faces of excavation. The measurement of this item represents a major change between NRM2 first and second editions. 
In NOM2 First Edition, as shown on this page, earthwork support was only measured if the QS was specifically instructed to do so. Whereas in the second edition of NOM2, earthwork support is measured to the faces of all excavation over 250 mm deep. Earlier I mentioned that the ground was infinitely variable. If items such as those listed on this page are encountered, then they are measured as extra over on the excavation on which they occur. Now, before moving on to the next video, have a go at doing these self-assessment questions. Here are some of the other video tutorials available in this program.